Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, our next session here is with uh, Omaili Arinka. Uh, Arinyanka, tell me I'm saying it right. All right, Arinyanka. All right, this is important to get people's names right. <laughs> um, so she is a software engineer at LinkedIn. She is also um, an artist and a poet from Nigeria. Um, she submitted her talk to us through um, our speaker submissions um, on how she built a gender dictionary. And we thought it was so interesting um, that we invited her to come here and share it with you guys today. So um, also the videos will be available later. Don't forget to tweet with hashtag GGX Elevate. Um, we've got uh, the Q&A going in the bottom. And just after this session, we will give away some more socks. So stay tuned. That's good? Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. Hi, um, I'm Yelly. Thank you so much for having me. Um, my talk is about building a gender dictionary. Um, but before we get into all the technical stuff, I wanted to play a little word game. Um, and it's simple. You don't have to do anything but think really hard. Um, so the game is, I say a word, and you think of an image that's associated with it. OK, here we go. Superhero. Ninja. Hacker. Rockstar. And then now I want you to consider the images that came up if they were of humans, um, whether those images were of a man or a woman or someone who doesn't exist in those binaries. Um, and this isn't to shame anybody, it's just an opportunity to reflect on biases. Um, because those biases we have, they make their way into things that are supposed to be objective. So when given the option, um, translating from English to French, uh, machine-assisted language translation systems like Google Translate code the word nurse as feminine. Um, so in the Turkish language, they use a gender neutral pronoun that covers he, she, it. Um, so when Google Translate goes from Turkish to English, it has to decide whether the gender neutral pronoun means he or she or it. Um, so this poem was written by Google Translate on the topic of gender um, and is a result of translating Turkish sentences in, that use that gender neutral pronoun into English. So some of the lines are, he's a teacher, she's, he's a soldier, she's a teacher. He's a doctor, she's a nurse, she's a nanny, he's a painter, he's an engineer, he's a president, he's an artist, he's a lawyer. Um, and so the algorithm is basing its translations on a huge corpus of human language. So it's reflecting a bias, a gender bias that already exists in the English language. Um, another example of the effect of gender language was highlighted by the augmented writing platform Textio. They found that the gender language in your job posting can predict the hire of the per that can predict the gender of the person that you hire. Um, so thinking about this and other ways that our everyday gendered language communicates ideas we might not mean to. Um, I decided I wanted to create something to allow us to explore gender language, and that's what this talk is about, building a gender dictionary. So specifically, I wanted to make an API and a tool where you could find all the gendered words, you could find the equivalent of a gendered word. Um, to be clear what a gendered word is, um, there are words that apply to a certain gender, so lady, gentleman, prince, princess, so some of them, like lady and gentleman, prince and princess, they have equivalents, um, and some of them do. Um, some of them, like actor, are not gendered in definition, but might be gendered in practice. So the first question I had to ask was, where and how do I get this data? Um, so there are some existing data sets of gendered words. Um, one, of this, one of those examples is from a team of Boston, um, a team of researchers from Boston University and Microsoft Research. They created a data set as part of their work into removing the sexist biases that exist in corpus. Um, in data sets that train algorithms like Google Translate. So they were trying to remove the bias um, from um, platforms like Google Translate. Um, but unfortunately, um, all the data sets I found, including that one, were not substantial enough. At most, they had 1,000 words, um, and a lot of the words were false positives, so they weren't actually gendered words. Um, so I decided I would use um, these methods, API stack data and web scraping, to get the data. So to start with, I had to determine what a gendered word was. So what would I tell, uh, what would I tell the computer that a gendered word was? Um, so to start, it was 
um, all the words in the dictionary that have at least one of these terms in it. So woman, female, girl, lady, man, male, boy. Um, for example, businessman has the word man in its definition, and archerist has the word female. So both of them would count as gendered words. Then I started looking for some APIs. Um, so I found um, one of the largest, the biggest online English dictionary by a number of words, WordNick, um, has an online API. Um, and it has a free, it has a reverse dictionary um, feature, which means for find all the words that have one of those terms in their definition. So you can see um, on the screenshot, the reverse dictionary of woman is all the words in the dictionary that have the word woman in their definition. So air woman would have the word woman in its definition, so it would count as a reverse dictionary term. Um, so WordNick has a client for interacting with the API, so I just use that to make a call to the reverse dictionary. Um, you can see that happening in line seven. I have all the terms, um, and then I make the call to the WordNick API in line 10. So I got about um, 400 words back, which was kind of confusing because the API said that there were like over 3,000 words that were um, that had the word woman in their definition. Um, so I had to find another data set. So I stored the 400 words I got from um, the WordNick Reverse Dictionary API and then moved on to the second way of getting of getting data, static data sets. Um, so I looked on GitHub and I found a dictionary in JSON format um, and I read that in using Python. Um, so Python has a JSON module that you can just import. Um, so I loaded that in for filtering and I got all the definitions of the word as you can see in line six. Um, so like I said, if a word has one of these terms in its definition, then it's a gendered word. Um, so how do we check that? Um, in Python, you can say if string in definition, so if woman in definition or female in definition or lady in the definition, but then you have this long list of conditions. Um, so instead of doing that, we can use regex. Um, so for example, my name is Omaya Lee, but um, a lot of people often misspell it, so I could use regex to, to create one pattern that matches my name and all the misspellings of my name. Um, so I, was good, I created a regex pattern for all of these terms, um, so I could search them in definitions and see if the word was a gendered word. So in regex, the pipe symbol represents or, so this is saying match woman or female or girl, and then if you find any of these strings, if you find any of these words in the string, you can see um, pattern.search definition. It's searching the definition for one of those patterns. Um, and then if you find it in the definition, then we do something. Um, but the issue with that is that it wasn't looking for whole words, so um, substrings also count. Like you can see on the right, the, the words that are matched, um, human, manhole, so these are not gendered words. They have the word man in them, um, but it's just a part of the word and not the full word. So I had to use word boundaries. So a word boundary allows you to perform a whole words only search. Um, so now it's looking for whole words and not just part of a word. So you can see on the right, it no longer matches manhole and manatee. It only matches man and boy at the bottom. Um, but then I also want words like grandfather. So what do I do? Um, so word characters, which matches a word character, so anything from A to Z, zero to nine. Um, so now it finds father um, and all the words that are combinations of father and another word in front. Um, so going step by step through the pattern, these parentheses are for grouping a pattern together as one. Um, this character set says match anything in this set. So you don't have to match all of them, but you just, you just have to match one thing in that set. Um, this is, like I said, matching a word character. Um, this is matching a dash. Um, and then this is saying it's optional. So there can be something before the word, but there doesn't have to be. Um, and these are the final regex patterns. Um, they're pretty long. But so after I finalized the pattern, I went through the dictionary. And for each entry in the dictionary, if the definition contained one of those terms, and I added it to the list of gendered words. So in line eight, it's checking if any of those terms are in the definition, then we add them. We, we add that to our list of gendered words. Um, so when I added together the words from WordNick and Webster and some other files, it came to about 8,000, um, which is great, much more than the 400 that I, I started with. Um, but then when I went through the list, there are some words that did not belong there, words like lioness. Um, so 
for my definition of what I wanted this gendered dictionary to be, it was a collection of gendered words for human beings, so not animals. So this was not a word that I wanted in my word set. Um, so instead, so I decided I would start to look for patterns in the incorrect words, so um, find what were the common things in the definitions of the words that were not supposed to be in the set. Um, so one of the patterns of incorrect words that I found was that in some of the incorrect words, the definition included the gender term being used as the object of a preposition. So for example, in the definition of waterfall, it says an arrangement of a woman. Um, in the definition of Peter, it says a common baptismal name for a man. So it's not a name that desc is describing an, a man, it's a name for a man. So Peter shouldn't be a gendered word. Um, and you can see in the other, in the other definitions, um, short cape worn by woman or the position of a man. Um, so how would I remove words that fit this category? Um, and the category being the gendered word is being used as the object of a preposition. So first I had to isolate the part of the string that I wanted to look at, um, and that was everything before the gendered word. So you can see the highlighted portion is everything before the word, the before and including the word man. Um, so we can use, in Python, we can use the RE module, which is for handling regex expressions. Um, so the RE search um, method in line four will search through the text for any of those terms, um, any of our gender terms in line two. So in this case, we have the string definition in line eight. So it's looking for the word man and it will find the word man. Um, so, and then we get, when we get the location of where the word is, we get the end index. Um, so in, in line nine, you can see the, um, the search method in, in regex returns the index of where the word was found. So from there, we can get the end, end index, and then we can use that to trim the string. So in line 11, you can see that the word, um, it, it's now a common baptismal name for a man, and it doesn't include everything after. Um, so after we trim it, we remove any punctuation. Um, we use the string class in Python. The string class has a list of punctuations. So we use that to filter in line five, and then we return the, the string without any of the punctuations. Um, so if, if there was a punctuation, it would remove it. Um, so if it, wasn't, if it was the string in line seven, the return string would be line nine, so which no punctuations. Um, so now that we have this trimmed definition, we can use NLTK to find where the preposition is in the string. Um, NLTK stands for Natural Language Toolkit. It's used for processing the English language. Um, so the first thing we do is we tokenize it. So tokenization is the process of chopping up a string into different pieces that are called tokens and then throwing away certain characters like punctuation. So you can see on the right, we pass in um, this is an online version of a tokenizer. We pass in a common baptismal name for a man, and then it breaks it up into different tokens. Um, after we tokenize, we can use something called a part of speech tagger. Um, so I load in the part of speech tagger um, in line, in two, it's part of NLTK. Um, in line five, I tokenize the string. So you can see in line six, it has um, the, the definition is chopped up into different pieces. And then in line eight, we use the tokenizer from NLTK, which gives every, every token a part of speech. So you can see common is an adjective, but baptismal is an adjective, man is a noun. And I know this because I looked up um, what the tags were in NLTK. So you can see um, NN represents a noun, so man is a noun. JJ represents adjective, so baptismal is an adjective. Um, and then after that, we first of all, we remove the A's and the ands and the does because we don't really care about them. Um, so we remove them in line four, um, and then we get, in line nine, we get the word before the gendered word. So we know that the gendered word is the last, is the last word in the sentence, is the last word in the string. So we get the word before that, and then we check to see if that's a preposition. Um, so in that case, um, in this case, um, a baptismal name for a man, the word before man is for, which is a preposition. So it returns false and says, this is not a gendered word. Um, another pattern was that there were a lot of clothing items. 
Um, so you can see skivvies, pajama, loose fitting trousers, all of these are not gendered words. Um, so I found a list of clothing items so I can remove any word that has one of these clothing item, items in the definition. Um, unfortunately, the website um, where I found the list, I had to apply for an API key. Um, I did apply like six months ago and they didn't get back to me. Um, so I decided I would scrape their website. Um, so web scraping is a tool for extracting information from websites that involves grabbing the HTML that makes up the website. Um, and for doing this in Python, there are two libraries I usually use url lib.request and beautiful soup. So the first thing you have to do is figure, figure out how the data you want is structured um, in the DOM, which, which you, can use, you, can, you can do using the inspector tab of your browser. So we see that the data I want is in a link that's the child of a span element with the class TD. So I open the URL of the page in line two in line three, I add it to beautiful soup in line four. Um, and then in line five, I look for the specific elements. So I'm trying to find links that are the children of spans with the class TD. Um, and then I get all the text for them and I have the list of clothing items. So I use that to filter the, the um, data set to remove any, any clothing items that are disguising themselves as gendered words. Um, and it came down to about 4,000 words the last thing I wanted to do was find gender opposites. So I wanted to match words to their opposites. King, queen, father, mother. Um, I can use that. I can do that using something called word to vec So word to vec is an algorithm that transforms words into vectors. So back in 2013, a handful of, a handful of researchers at Google um, set loose a neural net on a large corpus of about 3 million words um, taken from Google News texts. So the goal was to look for patterns in the way words appear next to each other. So you can see in the graph, microwave is close to refrigerator and it's far from the word grass. Grass is close to garden, is close to hose and sprinkler. So the Google team discovered that it could represent these patterns between words using vectors and vector space. Um, so words with similar meanings would occupy similar parts of the vector space. Um, and the relationships between words could be captured by simple vector algebra. Um, so these relationships are known as word embeddings. And the data set is called word to vec. Um, it's based on the idea that a word is characterized by the company it keeps. So a word is close to another word in space if they, if they appear in the same context. For example, we give the algorithm, if we give the algorithm this text, since salt and seasoning appear within the same context, the model it creates will indicate that salt is conceptually closer to seasoning than, say, chair. Um, and with that model um, and with those word vectors, we can do stuff like getting the similarity of words, you can see woman and rectangle are not very similar. Their similarity value is less than 0 0.1, whereas the similarity value for woman and wife is 0 0.8. And word analogies. So you can do it for woman. You can do woman is to queen as man is to king. Um, in Python, if you want to use models and the word to vec algorithm, you can use a library called Gensim. So I mentioned earlier that they used, um, they set loose a neural net on a model of like 3 million words. So you can load that model of 3 million words into Python um, using Gensim. So it's called Google News Vectors. So you can see in line two, we have a model, Google News Vectors, and we load that in, um, and then we have we can call the model's most similar method in order to get the equivalent of a word. Um, and this isn't perfect, um, but I think it works for most of my cases. Um, so in line nine, we pass in woman, wife. Um, so positive woman is the wife, and then we pass in man. And then the results we get, if the score is greater than 0 0.6, then we say it's an equivalent. And so we have um, and that was it. I got an initial word set. I got initial word set using APIs and finding static data sets, and then I cleaned and filtered the data set using regex, web scraping, and NLTK. And then I used words of vec to find the equivalents for word that have for words that have them. Um, and then I created a website and an API to house the data. Um, so you can see woman is the wife, as man is the husband. Um, 
So when navigating the site, users can learn um, what words are specific to a gender, um, what words have gender equivalents, what words don't, um, and which ones significant imbalances exist. Um, and you can see what words have undergone um, semantic derogation, which is a process where words take on more negative connotations. For example, the word mistress was, more, was once the equivalent of the word master, but over time it's, it's taking on a new meaning. Um, so in summary, the words that we don't and do have matter, they reflect our biases and the ideas that we value. So we risk reinforcing and perpetuating those biases if we don't interrogate the words we use and why. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amaili. This was great. I wish you, I like go back in and read the comments because everyone was like so excited about how you broke down the search methodology and um, the, the test you did at the beginning. I was like, oh, I thought of a man too. So um, everyone really, really enjoyed it. Unfortunately, we don't have time for Q&A and I know we're missing those a little bit today. So don't worry, everybody. Um, we, we have a list of the questions and we can go back and do like more in-depth interviews with all of the speakers later so your questions will get answered at some point um thank you again